Look up in the sky. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's the Adventures of Superman, the classic TV series which ran from 1952 to 1958, starring the charming and charismatic George Reeves as mild-mannered reporter Clark Kent and his alter ego, Superman. A strange visitor from the planet Krypton, whom has many superpowers. Where we see Superman, along with his friends from the Daily Planet newspaper, Lois Lane and Jimmy Olsen go on many dangerous adventures to stop evil criminals from wreaking havoc in the city. Which usually results in Superman beating up gangsters because... the 50s. In this well-loved, legendary TV show, which is a time capsule for the time that it was made in. So today, we are travelling faster than a speeding bullet, all the way back to the 1950s, to explore the classic Superman TV show by looking into 10 things that you didn't know about the adventures of Superman. So it's time to leap tall buildings at a single bound as we check it out. I'll tell you, if you'll bend this horseshoe. There. Wow. Number 10, George Reeves didn't want to play Superman. George Reeves may have been the face of Superman in the 50s and the quintessential Man of Steel to those who grew up watching his small screen fantastical adventures. He was, however, very reluctant to take on the role. He was offered the part of Superman for the TV series, but didn't really want to take it. He saw himself more as a serious movie actor, having previously starred in movies like Gone with the Wind. And he felt that if he transitioned to TV, no one would see his work. But he took it, and lo and behold, many people did watch his weekly efforts as the Man of Steel. As there was one audience glued to their 1950s TV sets, who watched every episode of The Adventures of Superman without fail. That audience, of course, being children. I mean, what's not to love about seeing George Reeves crashing through walls and beating up baddies and wrongdoers? Number 9. George Reeves nearly died trying to fly. So the big question is, in the early days of the 1950s, how was Superman going to fly on the small screen, particularly with a TV budget? Well, it was decided that the best way to achieve this was with wires, a solution that nearly proved deadly to Reeves, as while filming a scene of Reeves being held up by wires, one of the wires snapped, which caused the actor to plummet to the studio floor. He was very lucky, as thankfully he wasn't seriously injured. Reeves from that moment said that he will never be held up with wires again, and so all other shots involving wires were performed by stuntmen. As for Reeves, his flying scenes were achieved by filming Reeves laying down on a flat surface, in a body support platform, with the sky background superimposed behind him. Often in these shots, you can tell that Reeves is laying down on a flat surface, and pretty much the same flying shots are recycled and used over and over again throughout the series, but... Meh. It was 1950s TV, so, you know, what can you do? But what the George Reeves Superman was an expert at was jumping. <laughs> Boy, this guy could fling in and out like a pro and do it with great panache. This was achieved by using a springboard, with George Reeves jumping in and out of windows and other scenery. It oddly looks kind of magical seeing George Reeves' Superman jumping and bouncing around all over the place. It's terrific! And other special effect techniques were used, such as having Superman crashing through walls, which in hindsight you can tell are polystyrene walls. <laughs> seeing Superman crash through walls in the adventures of Superman never gets old. Number 8. The series started off with a B picture. The very first episode of The Adventures of Superman starts off with Superman's origins as a baby from the doomed planet Krypton, where he is sent to Earth. Which makes sense. However, this wasn't the first entry in The Adventures of Superman series. The Adventures of Superman began life as a B movie shown in theaters, which acted as a pilot making it not only the first feature film to feature Superman, but also the first DC feature film ever. And no, the previous features starring Kirk Allen don't count as they were serials, as with the Batman serials. 
Released in 1951 by an independent company, Superman and the Mole Men was made as an attempt to get audiences interested and excited for the proposed TV series. So whether or not the series would go ahead would depend on this movie. And it was okay, I guess. It wasn't brilliant, but it did its job and it's an interesting capsule of its time. It does actually kind of feel like a stereotypical 1950s science fiction B-movie. And the mole men themselves were played by little people and children with cheap looking bald caps on their heads. And it's interesting to watch for nostalgic purposes, if anything, to get a look at what Superman was like in the early 50s. What's interesting about this movie is the strange mole men are shown in a sympathetic light, whereas it's the irrational humans who are more of a threat. Many have claimed that Superman and the Mole Men feels less Superman and more akin to The Day the Earth Stood Still, a popular science fiction movie of the time. Number 7. Kellogg's Saved the Series So after the efforts of Superman and the Mole Men, the first season of The Adventures of Superman went into production, with filming taking place. But I'm guessing that someone high up in the production didn't believe in the series and didn't think that it will catch on, so the production of the show had stopped with the episodes that had been filmed remaining unaired. So that right there could have been the end of this version of Superman. That is, if it wasn't for a popular serial brand, as Kellogg stepped in to save the day and sponsor the show, and thus putting it back into production. Despite the season now being completed, it seemed that those involved still didn't believe in it and thought that the show would be a dud. But lo and behold, when The Adventures of Superman was broadcast, it was a massive shock and surprise to all those involved that the show was a massive hit, particularly to the cast. I guess those involved underestimated children who loved reading the Superman comics, who now got a chance to see a live-action Superman on TV, who loved nothing more than to see him saving the day and roughing up gangsters and petty crooks. The show appealed to a widespread audience of youngsters who generally loved watching exciting and fantastical adventures in their living rooms. And thus, thanks to Kellogg's, a TV phenomenon was born. Number 6. Hectic Workload Superman may have been a popular TV show and compulsive viewing to comic book lovers, but working on the show was anything but a delight, due to how hectic it was. The first season, which consisted of 26 episodes, was shot over a period of two weeks, and for the second season, two episodes would be filmed a week. Filming took place at RKO Studios in Culver City, California, with a lot of the on-location filming taking place around Los Angeles and other locations in and around California. A lot of the show was filmed out of sequence. Sets that would be used and shot for each episode were actually filmed back to back. For example, all the scenes that take place in the Daily Planet and Perry White's office were all shot at the same time, which is why the cast always wears the same clothes. And this disjointed style of filmmaking often caused confusion among the actors. Contracts restricted the cast from taking on other work if it may interfere with the show's tight schedule. In addition to that, part of the contract also stated that the actors would have to be free to film further seasons within a four-week notice, which made it difficult for the cast to get work on movie productions and other lengthy shoots. Reeves supposedly wanted to leave the show after the third season to work on his own TV show. There was an attempt to replace him with the 1940s serial Superman Kirk Allen, but he wasn't interested. But Reeves was lured back and got a pay rise. So... Basically, if back in the 1950s you were contracted to the Adventures of Superman, your ass wasn't going anywhere, especially when it came to doing other work. You were pretty much stuck making Superman. Number 5. 1950s Superman Totally Killed People This early iteration of Superman was often prone to getting into fisticuffs and scrapes with bad guys. But that's kind of Superman at that time, as he was like that in the comics too. But yeah, he could be pretty damn rough and tough and violent at times, and having no problem causing physical harm. But nowhere is Superman's more brutal side shown than in the season 1 episode, The Stolen Suit. In which, after a petty crook finds the Superman suit in Clark Kent's apartment, the suit finds itself in the hands of a gangster and his girlfriend. 
and come up to the conclusion of whoever apartment it was that they stole the suit from must be Superman's true secret identity. And so naturally Clark slash Superman is very nervous about this and is keen to get his suit back and for his identity not to be revealed. When Superman tracks down the couple who stole his suit, he has something of a dilemma on his hands as this couple know that he's Clark Kent and can reveal it to the world. Well, let's just say he doesn't use the memory mind wipe kiss. Nope, instead Superman dumps them on top of a mountain in the middle of the Arctic and imprisons them there. And after they literally beg for their lives and promise never to blab, Superman is like, nope, you're staying here. You may as well get used to it. Now don't try to escape. Your lives wouldn't be worth a nickel. So naturally, this terrified couple try to leave the freezing cold mountaintop where they fall to their deaths, never to be seen again. Yeah, Superman pretty much committed straight up murder. Yeah, Superman, he fights for truth, justice, and the American way. But if you find out his secret identity, he will totally kill you to death. Number four, a change of Lois. In the first season of The Adventures of Superman, actress Phyllis Coates starred as the hard-hitting reporter Lois Lane. At the time of being cast, Coates was already an accomplished film star, and despite that time period, her betrayal of Lois was no damsel in distress. She was pretty rough and tough and didn't take no crap from no one, creating a no-nonsense Lois Lane. However, after season one, the part was recast with Noelle Nil as Lois Lane. So what happened to Coates? Well, there are two stories out there as to what happened. One is that she simply wasn't available for the second season due to other filming commitments. Another story is that she had issues with the character. She thought she was playing dumb, which caused her to clash with the producers. She felt that someone as wise and headstrong as Lois would be able to figure out that Clark is Superman. So because of that, she left the show. There are, however, other claims that she didn't like the drinking of alcoholic beverages which took place on the set, but who knows? Her replacement, Noelle Neal, had previously starred as Lois Lane in the 1940s Kirk Allen serials, so she was already familiar with the character. Neal wasn't as rough around the edges as Coates, and she had more warmth about her and was more nurturing and gentle. And she definitely had great chemistry with George Reeves, and she would go on to play the part till the very end of the series. Whether or not you prefer a hard-hitting Lois or one that is more approachable and friendly depends on the eye of the beholder. Noelle Neal would go on to have a cameo in Superman the movie, and her and her Jimmy Olsen co-star Jack Larson, who, by the way, was a brilliant Jimmy, would go on to have brief appearances in the Superboy TV series, as well as 2006's Superman Returns. Even Phyllis Coates herself would go on to have a cameo in Lois and Clark The New Adventures of Superman. Number three, Superman in color. The first two seasons of The Adventures of Superman were filmed in black and white, as was the norm for TV shows back then. Because of this, Superman's suit wasn't the traditional red and blue colors, but the original suit was actually gray and brown in order for it to look better in black and white. However, from season three onwards, the show was filmed in glorious color, which was almost unheard of for its time. Some of the cast even thought the switch to color was ridiculous and pointless, as most people back then just had black and white TV sets. So this was actually pretty revolutionary. This was done because the producers thought that filming in color would give the show some longevity. As although at that time people were watching the show in black and white, later down the track when color TV became more prominent, the show could be repeated in color, which would give the show a new invested interest from audiences. So the powers that be behind the adventures of Superman were really thinking ahead. When the switch to color took place, the show itself had changed. The first two seasons had a gritty atmosphere about them, even a sense of film noir, where Superman would frequently fight gangsters, with murder never being an off-topic for the show. However, when the color era came along, the show felt more fantastical and slightly camp, more in line with the comic books of that time. Gone were the gritty days. This new era was paving way for the 1960s Batman TV series. And this new light-hearted version of the show would explore stories involving time travel and, um, Superman flying dressed up as a medieval knight. O okay. 
There definitely was a tonal shift from the colour era onwards. The adventures of Superman didn't feel like a dark and dangerous world anymore, but rather a bright and colourful world that was more reflective of the comic books of that time. Number 2. A Superman of the People George Reeves had a likeable charm about him, which made him very popular with the public. He had a warm demeanour and friendly twinkle in his eye. He was to Superman what Roger Moore was to James Bond. George Reeves' portrayal of Superman had become so iconic of the time, it seemed that everyone embraced him, where his appearances as Superman would go beyond the Superman TV show. In 1957, he appeared in the hit sitcom I Love Lucy, in character as Superman, in a classic episode. You mean to say that you've been married to her for 15 years? Yeah! And they call me Superman! <laughs> he also became a spokesperson for Stamp Day, where he made a short 17-minute film promoting schools and children to save stamps. The cast would even frequently appear in serial commercials. However, there was a strict rule at the time that Clark Kent cannot be seen to be having breakfast with Lois Lane, as that was considered taboo for that time. Despite appearing in commercials, Reeves avoided cigarette commercials, as he didn't want to encourage kids to smoke. Reeves had such concern over his child audiences, after a kid injured himself trying to fly like Superman, Reeves felt very worried about the ordeal, and made an on-air announcement stating that no one can do the things that Superman can, especially flying. Reeves would often make public appearances in character as Superman, and seemed to really appreciate his young fans. In the 1950s, people could be enjoying fine dining at a restaurant, and boom, George Reeves turns up as Superman. However, the movie Hollywood Land, which came out in 2006 and starred Ben Affleck as George Reeves, depicts a more grim picture of his super fame. In a scene where, while at a public event dressed as Superman, a young boy pulled a gun out on Reeves, wanting to shoot him and test his invulnerability, actually believing that Reeves is Superman, where in a tense moment, Reeves convinced the boy to put the gun down. At first, I thought that this was some kind of dramatization for dramatic effect and that it didn't really happen. But nope, I just looked into it and yes, at a live event, some kid apparently really did pull a gun out on George Reeves wanting to shoot him, with Reeves nervously coaxing the boy out of it. Frightening. Number 1. The End of an Era The Adventures of Superman was seemingly cancelled after the sixth season in 1958, after the death of Perry White actor John Hamilton. There are claims that George Reeves had wanted to break away from his public image as Superman for a while, in order to pursue other projects. The movie Hollywood Land made it look like Reeves couldn't be happier to get away from his iconic Superman role. So much so, there was even a scene where we see him barbecuing his Superman suit. The producers of the show were working around the death of Hamilton, and planned to replace him with a new character, who was going to be Perry White's brother, and planned for the show to carry on for another two seasons. However, the sudden and tragic death of George Reeves not only ended a great career, but also certified the end of the show. The producers still thought that there might be some life left in the show, and planned a spin-off focusing on the Jimmy Olsen character, based on the DC comic books, Superman's pal, Jimmy Olsen. But that never happened. Then, a really bizarre pilot was filmed called Super Pup, which actually used sets from The Adventures of Superman, and features Superman, or in this case, Super Pup, along with other characters from the show. Only the actors were all wearing dog costumes. Yeah, this is often considered an embarrassing and low point in the mythology of Superman. And many people are glad that a full series didn't happen. Then, in 1961, a pilot for a proposed Superboy TV series was also produced. But despite having 13 episodes already written, nothing happened beyond the pilot. Basically, the show couldn't survive without George Reeves, because George Reeves was the heart and soul of the show. His sudden death caused heartbreak to many young, adoring fans, who in their eyes felt that their Superman had died. But the show has gone on to be celebrated and enjoyed by new viewers over the years, and lives on in the hearts and minds to all those who grew up watching it, along with newcomers who love watching these weird and wonderful adventures of Superman. And for that, the show will always be immortalised. Rest in peace, George Reeves, a talented actor gone too soon. The Adventures of Superman is a delightful time capsule of what Superman was in the 1950s. It's a must-viewing for all Superman fans. 
Yes, the show has aged and is dripping with 1950s-isms, but it's just a fascinating experience seeing what the world of Superman was once like. And of course, the show is completely made more magical thanks to the charm of George Reeves. Anyway, I'm Minty, and up, up, and away! Wait, did 1950s Superman say up, up, and away? He did? Yeah? Alright, see ya! Thank <laughs> you.